Google Search Console is having a crazy outage for the second time in just the past few months. If you go to Google Search Console right now, as I am recording this, you will see that your traffic, your organic traffic for your most recent date is listed at near zero. It just tanks and it is a very frightening thing to see. And so you might be tempted to panic. You see this, you see it tanks. Then maybe you have other websites, you switch to other websites, you see it on your other websites too. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, did all that bad karma catch up with me? Did I get a manual penalty? Is it over for me? You go to your manual penalty, manual actions tab. You don't see anything. Shadow, is it a shadow ban? Is it the Google helpful content update? Is it done? And here is what to do. And here is what I did when I saw this. I went to X, probably threads would work too. I put in Google Search Console. I searched Google Search Console. And then I see good old Barry Schwartz, Rusty Brick. I got to get him on this podcast. One of my favorite SEO people to follow. And he said, Google Search Console performance report showing almost zero data today. This has to be a bug. Hopefully Google will confirm soon. Everyone is seeing the same thing. And that's it. Everyone is seeing the same issue. And this is the second time that this has happened recently. I wonder why it is having so many issues, why Google Search Console is having so many issues. But if you go to Google Search Console and you just see your organic traffic spiking down, it's the opposite way you want to see a spike. It's not just you. Don't worry. It's going to be fixed and you are still getting your traffic. Now, if you don't know what Google Search Console is, I'm going to give you a rundown of the best ways to do it, the most basic, but also some things that even if you are more of a seasoned SEO that maybe you don't think about all the time, that is worth thinking about more. Google Search Console is Google's own tool for accessing their search index. It lets you see how much traffic your website is getting from organic search, from organic search on Google. It shows you what keywords your website is already ranking for. And it allows you to submit your website and all of your pages to its index. So you can tell Google, hey, I exist. I'm over here. It has other things. It lets you deal with manual actions. So if you're doing some bad stuff, I mean, if you're doing bad stuff, you already know what Google Search Console is. You're sophisticated enough, though not sophisticated enough to not get caught. But it lets you deal with manual penalties, lets you check all sorts of other things. For example, why certain pages are not ranking. You can see that too. But these are the most basic things about GSC Google Search Console to know. Okay, number one, connect your site to it. Number two, lots of people don't actually know this. Put in all variations of your URL. Put in www.yoururl.com as well as just your URL.com. Do your HTTP version and your HTTPS version. Do all variations of your subdomain. Connect all variations, even ones that are 301 redirecting. Your www will probably be 301 redirecting to your non-www. Oh man, wish you could see this sunset to my left. This is crazy. Wow. I had to take a picture of this. I'm going to take a picture of this while I'm recording. And if you're watching on YouTube, you will see the picture I take. All right, connect your site and all its various versions to Google Search Console. Next, submit your homepage to the top bar to the inspect any URL in your website.com. Just make sure you submit your homepage. Whenever you update a page on your site or publish a new page, submit it in this top bar too. If it's an existing page that you updated, click request indexing. So you're going to request Google to index the update of your page. I actually just updated one of the articles on my website. It's called my love letter to bottom of funnel SEO. I just updated this article. And I submitted the update to Google Search Console. I saw that I was ranking. Well, so here's something else, a Google Search Console. Before I get to that, actually, okay, back up. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. Back up. So, sitemaps. You probably know this, but if you're newer to SEO, you might not. Your website should be generating sitemaps. These are lists of all the URLs on your website that you want to be indexed, that you want included in Google's index. You might also use sitemaps for users. You might have sitemaps. So... It can be easy for users to find URLs on your site, but most people are using sitemaps for SEO purposes. So if you go to edwardsturm.com forward slash sitemap underscore index dot XML, you will see all the URLs on my site that I want included in Google's index. And I have three pages for this. I have the overarching sitemap, 
And then nested under, I have the sitemap for all of the posts, all the articles on my website, and then a sitemap for all the pages on my website. And I'm gonna submit all three of those to Google Search Console under the sitemaps option on the left sidebar. Really simple. This just tells Google, hey, these are all the pages on my site. Also, you should have your sitemaps auto update. Whenever I put out a new page or post on edwardsterm.com or any of my other websites, the sitemap gets a new URL added to it. And then Google sees that. So even if I didn't submit that new page to Google Search Console, Google will eventually find it even if no one was clicking on it. The last thing, and this is what I was gonna say before, before I backed up, the last thing is Google Search Console will show you what you are already ranking for. It will show you how many clicks you're getting for those keywords, what position you're in, how many impressions you're getting, all sorts of fun metrics, all sorts of fun facts. So I see that I'm ranking number 10, I believe, for bottom of funnel SEO. One of my favorites, it's bottom of funnel SEO is the best marketing channel. It is so much fun and it is so easy. And you can just sit there and in a day pump out a bottom of funnel SEO landing page that gets qualified traffic, purchase intent traffic for years to come, super stable. I spent the last, since April, I've been making an SEO product called Compact Keywords about this. You can go to compactkeywords.com to check it out. I had a friend who used this method to make $3 million for one of his clients in literally only two days of work. This method is that crazy. But I see that I'm ranking number 10 for bottom of funnel SEO. And it's this article called my love letter for bottom of funnel SEO that I wrote a long time ago. This is a, that's a top of funnel article. My love letter to bottom of funnel SEO, this is a top of funnel article, not bottom of funnel. It's explaining basically the basics of bottom of funnel SEO. That's top of funnel. But I see that I'm ranking number 10 for it. I actually originally wrote it for my newsletter because I don't write top of funnel posts to rank on Google. It's a waste of time. They're just getting all that traffic is going to Reddit, to forums. Soon more of it will go to ChatGPT or it's going to big publishers who are abusing domain authority. Top of funnel SEO, which is a tremendous waste of time. However, I write top of funnel content for my weekly digital marketing newsletter, edwardstrom.com forward slash newsletter. And then I take whatever I write for that newsletter and I turn it into an article on my site. And this was one of those cases. I wrote a newsletter called my love letter to bottom of funnel SEO. I took that newsletter that went out and I put it as an article on my website, and now it's ranking number 10 for bottom of funnel SEO, and I see that with Google Search Console. And you know, it's crazy because I didn't even really optimize this article for the keyword bottom of funnel SEO, but here's what I did. First of all, I added a section to promote compact keywords in this article because I said, well, I'm already ranking for bottom of funnel SEO. I made a product about bottom of funnel SEO that needs to be in this article, so I added that. And then I added bottom of funnel SEO to the first sentence of this website. I said, this article shows exactly what bottom of funnel SEO is and how it's done on a website. And that's the first sentence of that article. And so my page optimization score for this article went from, I think it was 84 because I wasn't really trying to optimize for any keyword. I was just writing something for my newsletter to over 90. One of the most important things that you can do in SEO is take your keyword and add it to the beginning of the first sentence of any page on your site. It was a low hanging fruit optimization for me to make. I submitted the change to, you know where I submitted that change to. I submitted the change page to Google Search Console. And that's when I saw, cause I did these updates and then I saw, oh, that's weird. Google Search Console is showing that the traffic for all of my sites is just going directly to zero saw that it was a bug, submitted the change page to Google Search Console, bada bing, bada boom. Now I'm gonna rank better for that keyword. I was literally just a few minutes ago. So anyway, that's the basics of Google Search Console, basics of SEO, some SEO 101 fun stuff. But let me tell you, a lot of SEO is just doing the fundamentals properly and not going after top of funnel keywords. Don't do it unless it's a really low hanging fruit optimization that will not take a lot of time to make unless you're already writing top of funnel content for a newsletter. Anyway, if your Google search console is showing a big old fat zero or just not a lot of traffic and it's you're seeing a spike down, it's not just you, it's me too. And it's the whole SEO community. It's a whole digital marketing community because GSC, Google search console is having a little bit of a, it's having a little bit of a hiccup today and it will be back 
That is all for episode 481 of The Edward Show, my daily digital marketing podcast, 481 days in a row that I have done this crazy thing. I had a big espresso right before recording this. You can probably tell I am feeling so great. You know what I did? I put in butter, really high quality butter into my espresso because I found that it makes that caffeine drip. I just, I, I absorb more caffeine, I think, and I feel it for longer. And it also tastes really nice. My body can take it. I'm an ectomorph. I can't, I can't put on weight even when I try. So I can, I can put in that extra butter in my espresso and enjoy it. I'm having a great day. Hope you're having a great day too. That is all. Thank you so much for watching. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you so much for listening. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.